So welcome. What we have seen so far is uh, fluid statics, macroscopic balances where we talked about forces, pressure and so on. Then we talked about energy, Bernoulli equation and we have seen applications of that and one of the applications that we saw was to help you to calculate energy required for a pump or the other way around if I give you that pump require is so much energy is given to the pump, how much flow rate is possible and so on and so forth. In this part of the uh, lecture, uh, what we are going to see is uh, trying to look at little bit more in details about the pump. So this is the fourth part of our course. Just before we do that, just quick revision for you, just so that all these concepts are very clear to you. Uh, why are orifice meter and venturi meters called as differential head flow meters? What is a pitot tube used for? Why is pressure drop for two phase flow higher than the corresponding single phase pressure drop? Remember, I am asking why. Okay, we have calculated and we have seen that it is larger, but I am asking you why. What is meant by NPSH? NPSH stands for net positive suction head. And why is it important? It's okay even if you have a very rough answer right now. We will see a little bit more detail uh, about this answer as we go along in this uh, course, in the, this lecture and the next lecture. How do we account for additional head loss due to fittings in piping? Write Bernoulli equation in the form of head. So if you answer these questions, all the revision will automatically happen and then we can very um, easily go to the next part. So the next part is looking at pumps. This is a chart which is talk, going to tell you what kinds of fluid moving machinery we have. So they are called as pumps or compressors. So we'll see the classification. Why do we call something as a pump and why do we call something as a compressor? Uh, these are two categories. There are two categories. One is called as a positive displacement. Under that there is a motion of piston. They are called as reciprocating. Or another kind of positive displacement is a rotary, rotary positive displacement. So these motion of piston, they are called as a piston pump or a plunger pump or a diaphragm pump. Rotating member, they are called as gear pumps. And the centrifugal action, these are called as centrifugal uh, pumps or centrifugal compressors. So what we are going to do in this lecture is to try to see all these different types and see the mechanism, see the principle of how they work and how they are able to increase pressure and give energy to the fluid. So, recall from your uh, Bernoulli equation lectures that fluid moving machinery, either a pump or a compressor, uses an external energy to apply pressure, to apply force, to give energy and then that fluid which is at a higher pressure is able to go through the pipeline. So, we are, this device is converting external energy would be electrical energy into mechanical energy it is giving that energy to the fluid and we use Bernoulli equation to calculate this so the pump head that is required is, is equal to how much hydrostatic head is required to be overcome potential head how much pressure head is to be overcome or how much extra pressure head is required for the liquid how much kinetic head is to be imparted to the liquid or a fluid and how much head is lost due to friction. All that has to come from this pump power, all that we have to supply externally. So this is just a nomenclature. When we are talking about transporting liquids, we call that device, we call that machinery as a pump. Whenever we are transporting a gas, we call that device as a fan, blower or a compressor. Now fans, blowers or compressors, they differ it's just a name that is given but they differ in the amount of pressure increase that is happening. So when we say fan, what we mean is a very small increase in pressure. So for example, if you talk about the fan that is there in your room, the fan is giving, uh, uh, giving energy and we say the suction side of that fan is the upper part of the fan and the discharge side of the fan is a lower side or the under or the side where you are sitting. You are sitting in the discharge of that fan. Okay. So the difference in pressure, suction and discharge above the fan, below the fan, that difference in the pressure is very small. Therefore, we call it as a fan and fan is having an axial motion. It is having air that is being supplied in the axial direction. Axial direction means direction of the shaft or direction which is perpendicular to the rotation of the blades of the fan. So the two concepts that are important when you say fan, 
very small increase in pressure and axial flow of the gas that is there air in this particular case and the amount of air that is uh, displaced or amount of air that is handled is very large so we call that as a fan when we are talking about uh, very large flow rate and very small increase in pressure when we have a large increase in pressure say we are supplying oxygen air to the paraxylene oxidation reactor which operates at maybe 15 bar 20 bar so then the increase in pressure is one atmosphere to 15 20 atmosphere so there is a large increase in pressure we call that as a compressor and if there is a small increase in pressure let's say one or two atmospheres we call it as a blower so this is just the nomenclature but remember this is a scientific way of describing things i will show you something uh, uh, in the next slide so we must have all dealt with a compressor although we had called it as a bicycle pump so we had called it as a pump it was not transporting liquid but it is transporting air so we called it as pump but we called it as wrongly pump we should have actually called it as a compressor so this is a air compressor and when doctor gives you an injection he is having a, a, a piston or a syringe that is moving so that also is a pump okay so that's a pump but we don't call it as a pump we call it we don't say go oh, doctor please give me injection by a syringe by a by a pump we call it as a syringe only but uh, so the layman or the normal people how what language they use is different from uh, what we are talking about here this is a more scientific way of uh, talking about things so you see the bicycle pump you see four parts in that one is the drive mechanism this guy who is supplying the energy in actual case it could be steam or it could be an electrical uh, energy that is supplying so the drive mechanism the pump shaft that's what goes up and down that's what connects the person giving energy to the place where compression is happening that's such called as a shaft impeller or a piston something that moves inside up and down and casing the outside where the air is held and where it gets compressed and then the compressed air goes outside so these four parts you will be able to see everywhere just to show you some pictures of centrifugal pumps that are actually used in industry so you can see an electric motor here the drive you can see the shaft here it's actually inside this uh, inside this thing but it is it is a shaft that is running here there is a casing here which is housing the uh, the impeller and housing the fluid and the suction is here and the discharge is here and you can see how nicely the pumps are arranged one after the other and you can see that they are all arranged nicely on a ground floor and you can see a person doing maintenance of that pump as well but here also you can see the drive you can see the shaft you can see the casing and you can see the you can't see the impeller but this is the um, um, impeller that is rotating inside and you see the discharge from here now this is how it will look like the drive the shaft is in between here there is a seal and so on there is a casing and impeller is rotating inside so all these four parts that you see you will be able to see them on every machine that there, these are the four parts which actually help to get you higher uh, pressure now if you see the cut cross section of this impeller of this volute so if i take a cross section here and see the uh, see the end view or see the elevation this is how it will look like so this outer casing is called as a volute it's called as a volute this thing that is rotating inside is called as an impeller and you see that impeller is eccentric to this volute they are they don't have the same center of rotation they don't have the same uh, axis the impeller is located eccentric and we'll see why in 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 just a while okay and so you see this is the volute this is the impeller this is where the fluid comes in this is the volute and this is where the fluid goes out from right and this place where the fluid comes in it is the fluid is coming from here this is called as an eye of the impeller okay just to show you how it works so this is the impeller this is the eye of the impeller this impeller is rotating this is the volute and this is the discharge so suction is here now when the liquid is flowing inside this rotation of the impeller increases the tangential velocity of the fluid so tangential velocity of the fluid here if you see it is very small 
but here if you see it is rotating 2 pi r n that's the tangential velocity imparted so this tangential velocity is high here so the liquid is imparting kinetic energy to the fluid liquid is in the so the impeller is imparting kinetic energy to the liquid and when this impeller you see this impeller it is rotating liquid is coming from here and what is plotted is contours of velocity and you see wherever you see red that's the region of high velocity variable should blue that's the region of low velocity so you see that velocity is high at the edge of that impeller velocity of the liquid is high at the edge of that impeller now you see that impeller is eccentric so when the liquid is coming out of the impeller the cross sectional area of available for the liquid to flow increases progressively in this direction so if you see the gap between the impeller and the volute is small here it is slightly more 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 here this is just an exaggerated picture but uh, this is it is increased in the direction of the uh, rotation it is increased in the direction of the motion of the fluid so what that does is whatever fluid is there that has a high velocity when it goes around velocity is reduced because of increased cross section area and correspondingly pressure is increased so if you see the contours of pressure wherever blue region is there that's the region of low pressure wherever red region is there that's a region of high pressure so you see near the suction the pressure is lower and as you go along cross sectional area available for flow increases the gap between the impeller and the volute increases and the liquid is taking this path and therefore velocity is reducing you see velocity is becoming from red it is becoming green it is becoming blue correspondingly pressure it is going from red uh, it is going from yellow to red and so on so pressure is increased okay so centrifugal pump centrifugal action is going to increase kinetic energy but later on inside the pump the kinetic energy is going to be reduced and correspondingly pressure is increased and you see the low pressure regions here that's where liquid can vaporize that's where cavitation can happen right we talked about net positive suction and liquid goes inside it cavitates vapors are formed pump is not able to pump out air pump is not able to handle vapor we talked about all these things those are things will it will become clear now okay this is how a centrifugal pump actually looks like cross section this is the discharge this is the volute this is the impeller this is the eye of the impeller suction this is the shaft these are the bearings which are supporting this is the sealing fluid so that the fluid that is here does not come out and there is a motor on this side drive mechanism okay and you can see these impellers are of various types and depending on those impellers the pump performance will change we'll see that in the next class now let's come to the next category so this category we have talked about centrifugal action now let's come to the another category positive displacement so positive displacement is here you see like a bicycle pump we should say bicycle compressor wherever this piston is moving pressurizing goes out from air air at high pressure air goes out from here when the piston is moving to the left suction is developed here this inlet valve opens and air comes from outside into this so this is happening by the positively displacing action of this piston therefore these are called as positive displacement they directly increase the pressure so this is called as a single acting only in one part it is active this is called as a dual acting right so when this piston is going forward from left to right it is compressing going out when it is going back it is sucking that is on one side of the piston right side of the piston on the left side of the piston when it is going forward suction is generated air comes in when it is going back pressurization happens and air goes out so this is a double acting dual action double acting if you like compression and suction is happening on either sides of the piston now sometimes this piston may not move as a whole but only part of the piston moves like a like your um, let's say your uh, speakers speakers has a vibrating diaphragm that's what generates the sound so this is like that there is a diaphragm when this diaphragm is moving downwards suction is developed liquid comes inside when the diaphragm is moving upwards the pressure is increased and the liquid or gas goes up 
at high pressure so this is called as a diaphragm pump or a diaphragm compressor and all of us are carrying around a positive displacement uh, pump all the time with us that pump is operating all the time that's our heart it is pumping blood inside our body all the time sometimes that positive displacement action could be because of a rotating motion so for example if you see the gear so liquid is coming from here that liquid you see again liquid fills up here and then this part which is trapped between the gears those get carried towards the outlet pressures is increased and you go to the outlet so pressure is increased by a rotating action of these gears so these are called as a rotary positive displacement pumps and these are called as gear pumps so that rotating action it could be a gear or it could be a screw then this is called as a screw pump or a screw compressor or in the laboratory you might have seen this these are called as peristaltic pumps so there is a tube and there is a rotating member here so see that rotating member it compresses and positively displaces the liquid from the inlet to outlet it traps the liquid and it takes the liquid from lower pressure to higher pressure from supply to discharge these are called as a uh, uh, these are called as peristaltic pumps peristalsis is the action so peristaltic like what happens in our um, uh, intestines peristalsis motion peristaltically the uh, waste products are pushed from the stomach and uh, out through the uh, body so that's called as a peristalsis or peristaltic it's a positive displacement uh, pump if you like so in our body there is a positive displacement heart and a positive displacement uh, action uh, of the uh, intestines and the bowel motion so again just to uh, reemphasize we call it as a centrifugal motion they are called as pumps or compressors or blower liquid being handled liquid being compressed liquid being increased in pressure by centrifugal motion this is called as a centrifugal pump if it is a air or a gas that if pressure is increasing because of the centrifugal action they are called as a centrifugal compressor or a centrifugal blower or it could be a positive displacement reciprocating like your um, uh, like your um, uh, syringe then it is called as a reciprocating pump or a reciprocating compressor if it is a positive displacement because of the rotating action it is called as a gear pump rotary positive displacement gear pump screw pump or it could be a gear compressor or a screw compressor and fans axial flow they uh, the flow is actually uh, um, perpendicular to direction of rotation and so they could have an axial flow pump or you could have an axial flow fan so axial flow pump is transporting liquid actually axial flow fan is transporting gas actually but the uh, but the mode is axial the it's a uh, the increase in pressure is small flow rates are very large so uh, this is what i wanted to talk about in this course so by this time uh, you are uh, by this time the categories the classification should be clear by now this classification should be clear by now and you should be able to understand what is the mechanism of action of all these types of uh, compressors and uh, pumps so that's what i wanted to cover in this lecture and in the next lecture we'll see little bit more in detail uh, about centrifugal pumps or centrifugal compressors the centrifugal action they are by far the most popular and the most widely used uh, uh, equipment is a centrifugal pump they are ubiquitous there are many in number in a typical plant you will have hundreds 50 uh, pumps and so on you, you will have a stand by each pump will have a stand by pump a pump b so when sometimes when pump a is under maintenance the pump b can be used and keep the process going so uh, pumps are the most commonly used equipment centrifugal pumps are the most commonly used equipment uh, and therefore we will spend a lot of time on centrifugal uh, pumps that's going to come in the next class